we are here with Felissa Rose, who Hi. you might know as Angela from Sleepaway Camp. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if you don't, you should be watching that as soon as this podcast is over. Yes. <laughs> and so what was it like having your first film role at 13 be a transsexual killer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think at 13 I really understood what that was. But um, it was an incredible experience. We really had a lot of fun making that movie. And um, in fact, most of the cast and crew are still my really good friends. Um, and it was just kind of uh, an experience that obviously stayed with me forever, but not until my later adult years did I realize what that film really was about. And um, it's, it's been quite a wild ride and, and a great experience for me. Uh it's, it's a great role, it's a great film, um, but you ended up taking off quite a bit of time after that film was done. I mean, I guess we kind of have some idea of what you might have been up to off camera, but uh, what, what did you decide to do at that time? Well, I was 13, so I stayed in school, and um, then really when I was probably like 17, they decided to make the sequels, part two and three, and Michael Simpson called me in, and um, I read with him, but he loved Pamela Springsteen for that role, and it was quite a, a different tone, you know, the, the sequels. So I decided I was accepted to NYU, Tisch School of the Arts, and I continued with my education and studied and decided that I'd work on my craft as an actress. And um, they went on, made the movies. They're hilarious and awesome in their own right. And Pamela Springsteen is amazing. And um, and it wasn't until really like um, a few years later that I decided after school that I wanted to continue acting. And I did a lot of theater in New York. And then I took on you know a bunch of film roles and continued in the horror genre. So that's where I landed. And. Uh... So you returned to the Sleepaway Camp saga with uh, the fourth one, Return to Sleepaway yes. Camp. What was that process, getting back into the role? Well, you know, it wasn't until Jeff Hayes really, like, kind of um, made a, a big splash with the website and people were just coming out of the woodwork, like, we love this movie, out of the closet, so to speak. Um, I'm a Sleepaway Camp fan. And... Um, Robert Hiltzik realized that there was an audience for the movie. So he had somewhat of a script already written, and he polished it and, and worked on it. And then um, I guess it was in, like, 2001, we were getting ready to uh, film, but we lost funding. And then we started filming in 2003, and he and I got really close, and I helped cast it. Uh, and when he told me what my role would be, I was a little like, you know, shocked because it was a bit of a, a strange, you know, coming back, so to speak. And um, I really loved it. I enjoyed it so much. Although it took me six hours every morning in makeup, it was, uh, it was a great experience and very surreal because now I got to party. I was an adult <laughs> and I was with Johnny Tierston again and, and Paul D'Angelo and Robert behind the camera. And it was just as incredible as the first one. Uh, you spoke about, you know, you were 13 when the first one came out, and it was 20 years later when you returned to it. it what is that experience like being different? Because, I mean, I'm sure as a child, there's so much going on that you really didn't appreciate, but now as you look back, and now as, like, an adult actor, you're able to sort of see these things. Well, you know, the first one, there I was, like, I was just a kid. I had never done anything. My mom was on the set. You know, it was a totally different situation. And then when I realized I was kind of getting a second chance, so to speak, to do like my sleepaway camp thing, it was incredible because um, I really took in every moment, like just acting in, you know, the greatest movie that I had ever been in, you know, what I was known for, Sleepaway Camp, and working with Johnny and Robert, as I said, and just playing that character, it's like that's become really the fabric of me, like the whole mm. Angela role. So it was, it was I can't even describe it. Like, I don't even know what the words are, what it was to be on the set and and just do it all over again. I was given, like, a second chance as an adult. And the weird thing is I met my husband on the set. He was a big fan. 
and he's the singer for a band called CKY. So we had the band come, and it's like the second he and I met on that set, it was like we fell in love, and as cheesy as that is, it's like Sleep Boy Camp again gave me another part of my life, a husband and kids. And so it was just really made me feel like Sleep Boy Camp has taken over my whole world without my even, you know, I just surrendered to it. <laughs> And so I guess that brings up the question of uh, part five. Have you heard anything? Yes. Um, Robert and I have talked about a, a movie called The Reunion, which would be another sequel, but even more so, and I'm kind of just putting it out there, although he'd probably kick my ass if he knew I was saying this. We've really talked about remaking it, and although I've said in the past I'm not like a huge remake fan, mm. I think Sleepaway Camp, given the chance, could be a really interesting remake because it's not, you know, it was the type of movie where it's known for the ending. Mm. So I think if we remake it and give it even a, more of a twist, like keep that twist with other things, um, it could be quite an interesting remake. So uh, when you look, you speak of remakes, you talk about all the things that have been remade: Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare Texas on Elm Street, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, Hills more, of more often than not, though, they are not. Last has on the list. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, those are all, all notable ones. Yeah. But it's just sort of like, more often than not, the remakes really don't capture that original film. And do you worry about some, I don't know, platinum dooms, not to <laughs> pick out a company to do it, just come in and take the property and be like, well, it's got a name, we're going to remake it, and then just sort of like cannibalize the original project? Well, um,. Hopefully I'm not like, you know, saying anything I shouldn't, but I will be, this is the first time I'm kind of talking about it. Um, it will not be taken away from Robert. So you're, you have your, the original director, the original writer. I think all of those remakes, what has happened is um, the title has been taken, like Prom Night, yeah. so to speak, and they're just kind of capitalizing on what was an 80s film Absolutely. and glossing over that, making it a Hollywood thing, mm -hmm. where what we have had meetings about already is not only taking Sleepaway Camp, but making it better with all of the original stuff. So I don't think it will wind up like that because if you if we don't sell it to Hollywood and we keep Robert at the helm, you can't. It can only get better because it was cheesy, you know. But if he can, if he had like the chance to do it over again, I think it can be a really good remake. I, I don't think you should underestimate Hollywood's capacity to fuck shit up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, th I think there's a lot of room to go improve since it is a great idea, but I, yeah, I worry about Hollywood. It's good to know that I don't think Hollywood will be involved. Well, I that's think great. that they want to. They've been in touch with Robert, and I think that he's smart enough to know that this, you know, I mean, it's his baby. And I brought it up to him years ago let's remake this. And he's like, no, I'm not ready. I don't want to. And people have gotten in touch with him, and he's like, okay, if I do this, it has to be all about me, meaning him. Mm -hmm. So I think if he does it, it won't be that, you know, I, I glossy. Think, I think that's commercial. Very like 18 year olds, yeah. like, hi, I got my first roll and yeah. my first set of boobs, <laughs> and I'm making a movie. <laughs> Yeah. So hopefully it will be its own real That's thing. That's very reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you have any upcoming projects? I uh, do, yeah. Um, I did a movie called Breath of Hate with Sean Kane, who I did Silent Night, Zombie Night with. Um, I just finished a movie called Poe with Francis Xavier, who's an incredible director. And I'm working next week in New York on a movie called The Perfect House, which we've had a trailer up, and the trailer blew me away. So I think that this film will be really great. Uh, is there a place where we can get more information about what you're working yes. on, like a website or something? Yes, felissa-rose.com. And I'm really like a big, I'm not a tweeter or I've kind of given up MySpace, but Facebook. And you can go to Felissa Rose Esposito Miller. I know that's like a long, but it's my thing. <laughs> and, every, you know, it's like my friends are on and work and, and, you know, I keep up with all of my stuff there. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. That was good. Thanks.